gonna remove these push pins. Use a trim tool, just get underneath, pop these push pins out. Slide the center up first. That unlocks it and then you can pull the rest of it out. Pop those out. And on both sides, you wanna take these bolts out, use a 10 millimeter socket. Remove those. Underneath here, you're gonna have some push pins holding this on. You wanna use a trim tool and take those push pins out. All of those along there. Over on the side, you wanna take those push pins out right there. Just use that trim tool, get that one out there. And there should be one right in the corner here. You want to take that one out because that's going to separate the inner shield from the bumper cover. So do that on both sides. Now we're underneath, we're going to take all these screws out. You're going to use a T20 socket. Take those out. Then just grab the panel and you just want to slide it towards the back of the vehicle. Now from the side, we're going to take off these three screws, use the same T20 socket. Then you can peel away, pull back on the inner fender well. You want to disconnect the light that's on the side here. Just grab the connector. Push down on the tab and then slide the connector out. If there's fog lights, you're gonna to wanna to reach in there and disconnect the fog light as well. Do the same on the other side. And disconnect that connector. Now just grab the bumper cover right here and you just wanna pull outward pretty hard. like that. It's clipped in right there. You want to do the same on the other side. And again, just pretty forcefully, just grab it and pull. Then just grab the whole bumper cover and slide it forward. You're going to remove this panel. Just use a trim tool or a screwdriver and just pry up on this clip right here. There's another one over here. And then this piece slides forward. Take that off. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Take this screw out right here. Then this piece slides out. And just pull the piece forward and it slides right off. On top, there's three push pins. Take those out, just use a trim tool. Pop those out. And from the front, there's 10 millimeter bolts. Just use a 10 millimeter socket. Take those bolts out.
Now just grab this cover on the side. You just slide it up. Same on the other side. Kind of clips in, and then it slides forward. Take this shield off right here. It's just going to slide up. Take these push pins out on the front. Just use a trim tool. Pop those out. And then this little shield comes off. Just twist it and slide it out. Do the same on that one. Now you want to support the hood, whether you use a two by four or a hood prop so that you can take this bar and slide this bar out of the way. Now, before we take this bar out, you want to just mark it just with a felt tip pen. You want to do that on both sides. You can wipe away the dirt. That's good. Using a 13 millimeter socket, Take this bolt out. There's a little bracket here. You could take that off. That supports the radiator and this bolt. Same 13 millimeter socket. And there's one in the back here. Take those out. Now we can flip this up. There is some wires we want to disconnect. You can use a trim tool, pop the retainers off. This wire we're going to disconnect right here. This connector right here, you want to move the lock tab. Disconnect the connector. There's a couple other connectors on the side. We'll disconnect those as well. Now you can see them a little better. There is a little lock tab on these connectors. You want to slide that back. Just use a screwdriver. You can push down on the tab. Connect it. So you slide back on that and then push down on that tab and disconnect it. Same with this one. And then the rest of the wiring harness. Just use your trim tool and just pop these out. Pop this one off going to stay with it. And we're going to take this. If you wanted to, you could disconnect the latch and move that out of the way or just move this whole piece and just set it aside. Just to get some more slack, I'm gonna remove the retainers for this wiring harness from the frame. Right here and right here. And I can just slide it out a little bit more so it's not in the way. You can even use a wire tie or a um, or a bungee cord and keep it out of the way. That's good. Now this harness is going across the front right here. You want to take that off the fan. Just use the trim tool. Pop those clips off. Let's just 
clipped in down there. And it's clipped in over on the side, right there. And you can disconnect it on that pressure sensor right there on the AC. Pop that off. There's another connector right there attached to the radiator. Pop that off. Just push down on the tab. And we can slide that wiring harness out of the way. And then disconnect to the large connector right here. Push down on the tab. Just try to wiggle that off. And there's a couple other retainers holding those wire, that wiring harness on. Take those off. And down below here. And there's one more way down. Those are all disconnected. Over on the side, you can take some long needle nose and there's a little clip that you have to squeeze right there. That's holding the fan in. As you squeeze that, you can release the fan. Just slide the fan up. You just use a trim tool, slide it up. And then do the same on the other side. Just go underneath here. You just need to slide this in. Just clipped in right there. And there we go. Now that's loose. Slide it up on the driver's side a little bit. You just want to twist it. And it slides right up. Now we want to drain the coolant out of the radiator. There is a little place where you can put a hose on the end right there where the drain is. You don't have to do this, but it just makes it a little cleaner. You're not going to make as much of a mess. Then you can open the valve. Make sure you have a drain bucket underneath. There you go. We'll let that drain out. That's all drained out. Now we can just close that. Take that hose off if you put that on. Slide that hose off. Now we're gonna lift the radiator up slightly, and just move it out. We can access this hose back here. It's a little cover that you wanna pry back. You can just use a trim tool. Slide that cover off. Then you can access the clip. Just take that clip out. That's what the clip looks like. So you want to pull that out. Now you can disconnect the hose from the radiator. Just grab it. You want to make sure you have a drain bucket underneath. You're going to have some, a little bit of transmission fluid come out when you pull this off. Just going to drip down a little. Now we can disconnect this hose right here. You want to use some hose clamp pliers and move that hose clamp. 
You can try to do this from up top or it might be easier for you underneath here. clamp a little bit. There we go. Just try to twist the hose if you can. And it might be a little easier to grab it from up top and slide it off. You're going to lose some coolant. And take this upper transmission cooler line off. Just take that cover off, just like down below. Then using a pick, you want to take out that clip. Take that clip off. And grab the line. Just wiggle it back and forth a little bit and slide it off. Out of the way. And this coolant hose right here, just use a pick and grab the clip. You want to release it just like that. You don't have to take it off completely. And then grab the hose. Just twist it back and forth a little. Slide it back. Then have a drain bucket underneath. You might lose some coolant. We're gonna take this screw out right here, use a T20 socket. Take that screw out. And that's loose from that. To prevent the condenser and the intercooler and the other cooler that's right there from falling. I'm just going to use a strap, go underneath, just go around the front cross member and then around the bumper right here. Just hook those together. That's just going to pre prevent that from falling when we take the radiator out. Now we can disconnect the radiator from the other two coolers. There's a plate right here that you need to pry out, pry outward. It's attached to the radiator. If you pick up the radiator and move it a little bit. these lines off. Just move those out of the way. out and now you can release these clips push down on that and on both sides pull up the condenser and you can separate it from the radiator And it slides right out. Now 
we're going to pull this sensor out. Just use some needle nose pliers, take the clip off, slide that up like that, grab the sensor and slide it right out. On the new one, we're going to take the clip off right there. You want to get a new seal. Install the seal. Just slide it in position. So the seal's in there. You could always try putting the seal on the sensor itself. And slide the sensor in place. Push it all the way down. I'll take the clip and put the clip on. Just lock it down. That's good. These rubber bumpers, you want to take these off, transfer those to the new one. Just like that. There is a slot for them. Do the same on this one. Now we'll slide it in position, just like it came out. Just go back and forth. Get the hoses out of the way. And just get it lined up down below. If you have to, taking this turbo hose off, this goes to the intercooler. Just take this clip off. Slide that clip out of the way. Gives you a little more room. And slide the radiator down. Then you want to slide the intercooler bracket into the radiator. That's in position. Just make sure all the clips go in place. This one up top as well. in. That one's got to get lined up. It's all lined up. It's all clipped in place down below. Then we can put the turbo hose back on. Slide that spring in place. Oops. And make sure it locks, locks on. That's good. Now that's locked on, we can slide this bracket in place. Just move these 
cooler hoses out of the way the best you can. It's gonna go right in that location. All right, that's locked in place. I can pull those hoses back. And just clip those in. Now we can put this bolt in to this bracket on the side and tighten that down. Just snug that down. Now get the coolant hoses on. Start with this one, line that up. Make sure the clip is on there. When it's lined up, should be able to click it down. That looks good. Make sure you hear the click. You can give it a wiggle, see if it's gonna come off, and that looks good. Now put this coolant hose on, line that up. When that's in position, make sure the hose clamp's in position. And you can take your hose clamp tool off and slide the transmission cooler line in. Just try to slide it into the fitting first. Lock it down, push that little cover over, and you can lock it into that bracket. Just like that. And you can connect that transmission line that you got from underneath if you can reach it. Otherwise, go up in the air and do it from underneath. But if you can reach it from here, just do it now. Lock that in and put that little cover on. Now, if you put the strap in this location, you can take that off now. Take the fan and we'll slide it in position. You're gonna slide the passenger side down first. Just angle it down a little bit. It's in position there. Get it lined up on the driver's side as well. lined up on both sides and then just push it down, lock it in place. Now you want to hook up the wiring harness, connect the connector right here, lock it in, and then take and push any of the push pins for the wiring harness in the correct position. Then run the wire over here. It's going to go down and around. Plug in those connectors. One goes on the switch or the sensor on the radiator. And the other one down here. And lock it in. Now take this bracket, line it up. Before we tighten it down, we want to put the wiring harness in so that we can get everything lined up. Plug these connectors in. 
push the retainers on. And that's all lined up. And that's good. And it lines up with the line, although there's not a lot of movement in there, so it's probably not a big deal, but that's okay. Now I'll put the bolts in. Get those started. And you have these brackets for the radiator. Put these in before we tighten all those bolts down. Get those lined up. Now you can put the hood prop back, line that up, remove your, your other hood prop. Now I'll take this cover, slide that in position, and lock it down, and put these pieces in, slide that in position. And there should be a screw that goes right there. Same on this side. It's gonna line up right there. And there should be a push pin that goes right here. That holds that in. And same with right here. Push that in, lock it down. Now put this panel on. Line that up. It's gonna clip in place. Take the push pins, line those up, push those down. Now slide this air duct in place down below. And put these 10 millimeter bolts in. There's some more that go over here. The last one. And one more right here. And we'll tighten all those down. lock in place right there. Now I take the bumper cover and line it up. On the sides, you wanna push it in into the clips. Do that on both sides. And lock it in. Now on the side, you wanna get these screws lined up. Just make sure that the bumper lines up with the fender. Snug that down. Just do the same. Get those started. Tighten those down.
same on the other side. If you want to, before you put these screws in, you can connect this side marker light right here. If it's a little bit easier, but you can still access it from underneath. Lock that in place. Then you can get those screws lined up. Slide this panel in place. Lines up right there. Push pins in, lock those down. There should be four of those right there. And get all the screws started. and snug those all down. And tighten those all down. And the two push pins on the side, you want to push those in. Now put the push pins in and lock them down. Take the two 10 millimeter bolts, get those started. And tighten these down. After you're done this job, you want to make sure you add the appropriate coolant. You can take the cap off the reservoir, fill it up, and then run the engine for about 10 minutes, monitoring the engine temperature, make sure it doesn't overheat, and then constantly checking the level. Shut the vehicle down, let it cool down. Once it's cool, adjust the level.